Hello, greetings. So in this video today, we will be looking at a demonstration about the vibrational analysis. So in this demonstration, we will be taking an automobile component, the shock absorber, and we will be performing a random vibration analysis on that. And the objective would be to find out the directional deformation in X, Y, Z, and the one misses stresses with the induced random vibrations. So the material that we have is the gray cast iron for the entire geometry, entire model. And just for the spring, we have the structural steel assignment. So this is an assembly with multiple parts that we will see uh, once we go into the demo. So the various constraints or the loads and boundary conditions for the geometry or the model are that the model is fixed at the top hole and a displacement of 10 mm, 10 millimeters is being given in the y direction on the bottom hole in the positive y direction, right? And after that, there will be a random vibration given at, in the form of a PSD acceleration with the given values in the chart. So let us go and see how to perform this kind of a simulation, how to perform the automobile component simulation in this kind of a model, right? So the first thing that I would be doing uh, once I go into the project schematic is I will be bringing in a static structural. I will right click on the geometry to import the geometry that I want. As I said, it's a shock absorber assembly. So let us go ahead into the mechanical GUI and look into how the model is being represented and how we can go ahead and perform the simulations. So now once the mechanical geometry UI is opened up, sorry. So in the geometry, as I said, because it is an assembly, we have multiple components, the bottom cap, the top cap, the plunge, the, plung, uh, the cylinder and the plunger and the spring, right? So we have multiple components here. So for that, as we have seen that we need to give the materials as structural steel for the spring and gray cast iron for the remaining components of the model. So what I'm going to do is by default structural steel is automatically added. So for adding the gray cast iron, what I need to do is I need to click on the materials. It will open up this tab, this window here. One of my previous favorite was gray cast iron. So I, it is available by default, so I'll just click on that to add. Click on that plus icon to add it. If it is not being shown here, all you need to do is you can type it here, type the name of the uh, material that you are looking forward to and it will appear in the list. So once that is done, I will come back to the geometry and what I can do is I can control select multiple geometries at the same time and here in the details window, I have an option of material assignment as structural steel. So I'll just remove that and say gray cast iron for all the other geometries. By default, this can be done and st spring is being given by default the structural steel material. So once my material assignment is done, once I have taken care of my engineering data where materials and others are being assigned, once that is done, then the next thing that I will be looking at is the contacts. So by default, by the virtue of an assembly, so the components have a multiple coincident faces. ANSYS uh, mechanical GUI automatically finds those out and gives us the list of what are the various contacts available. For our better understanding, what I can do is I can select all of them, right click and say rename based on definition so that it will clearly tell us where the contacts are, what are the various contacts, what are the various properties of it, all that information is being shown. So among this, among this, there will be few contacts which will be bonded as if they are completely joined. There will not be any separation or any movement or any sliding allowed in them. Then there will be certain contacts which will have a little bit of sliding effect possible by the virtue that we will be giving them the frictional contact. So let us go ahead and give the components which will have the frictional and which will have the bonded. So by default, this particular contact, which is the bottom cup and the cylinder, right? It will have a bonded contact. It will not move. The next one is the spring and the bottom cup. This will be a frictional contact with the coefficient of friction as 0 0.3. The next one is the 
upper cup and the plunger it again has bonded contact the next one the spring and the upper cup again the frictional with 0 0.3 as coefficient of friction the bottom one the plunger and the cylinder here it will be given again a frictional contact but the coefficient of friction is quite less here so 0 0.1 now once this is done once I have finished with my connections and contacts the next thing that I would like to do is discretize the geometry into manageable pieces by the virtue of what we call it as the procedure of meshing so what I'm going to do is I would like to control the size of the meshing I would like to control the element size cell sizes so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to mesh right click and say insert sizing and here I'm going to perform at the complete body selection right if you can notice here at this particular location right the default size is 17.587 mm I do not want my cell size to be that big I want it relatively small so let us say I go with 10 right and the geometry uh, because I have performed the control all select right control a selection I can just click on that so the entire geometry is applied the body sizing of 10 mm right so now I can go ahead and have a look at the mesh by clicking on generate so the meshing has been completed and it looks like the meshing is quite good considerably okay so what I'm going to do next is the various boundary conditions that we were talking about the fixed support and the displacement that I'm going to give so I'm going to click on the static structural right select the face filter click on that right click and say insert fixed support right and then the bottom face where we were talking about giving the displacement right I can say display select that and hit displacement so in the displacement as we discussed that it was in only in the Y component that we were giving the value of 10 mm right so this is how I'm going to give it so once this is done once this is done I'll simply say solve to perform the static structural simulation when the displacement is being applied from the bottom when the spring is being compressed from the bottom and it is fixed at the top so now after we have hit the solve this is the solution is completed the simulation has been done and now to verify the results to see what the result of the simulation is I need to go to solution right click on that and say insert deformation total and I can also go ahead and insert the one misses stresses to just visualize how it the stresses and the total deformation is happening so for that all what I need to do is I need to right click and say evaluate results because they have still to be evaluated so now the total deformation evaluation is done and if you notice we can have the animation to see visualize how the simulation is being carried out what is the total deformation that has happened right and also we can have a quick look at the equivalent stress how the stresses are being developed during that displacement and the fixed support being given right so now so now after we have performed the static structural analysis in the terms of the displacement load being given now we will go ahead and perform a model solution to see uh, in the various ranges of frequencies how the geometry is going how the model is going to behave across the various frequencies and how it is going to give us the results based on this static structural that we have already done so for that what we are going to do is we are going to go to this project schematic again and from here I am going to bring in a model template and drop it in the solution tab so once it is done once I have dropped it if you can notice there are few connections that have formed which showcase that the geometry is being sent across the geometry is being shared for further evaluation or further simulation so I can go to the mechanical right if you notice again they are requesting it to be performed so all I need to do is I can click on this and say evaluate all results update right 
and now what I can go ahead and do that in is in the model all I need to see is what is the behavior of the geometry when it is being exposed to the various frequencies so for that by default I can go ahead and look into the model for six mode shapes that is translation in x y z and rotation in x y z rotation along the x y z so these six mode basic modes that I can have a look I'll just find them out so for that all I would do is I will again click on solve so as we have seen we have just solved the model simulation as well for the six mode shapes so now let us have a quick look at how the deformation is happening or how the geometry the model is responding to the various uh, frequencies and all so for that what we are going to do is if you can notice here there are diff six different frequencies that are shown so I can select all of them by just control drag and right click and say create mode shape results so once that is done all I need to do is right click on the solution the basics and say evaluate all results so once the results are evaluated I can have a quick look at the various mode shapes how the deformation or how the body is geometry is performing given to the various frequencies so this is a translational uh, deformation given a frequency of 73.602 Hertz right so similarly you have different deformations happening in different directions so this is the y direction this is the z right so similarly you have the rotational as well x y z translation and rotational in x y z so once this model analysis is done we can go ahead forward to the random vibration information the random vibration simulations so because for any kind of a random vibration a simulation you would have to have the model simulation done it's a prerequisite that it is right so without doing a model simulation you cannot go into the random vibration simulation so because we have performed the model simulation right now we can go ahead into the random vibration so for that what I'm going to do is I am again going to go to the project schematic and here I'm going to bring and drop the random vibration template onto the solution of the model simulation so once this is done once this is done all I need to do is just update right and once the update is done I can go ahead into the mechanical and perform the random simulation as well right so I have if you can notice in the structure tree the outline tree that random vibration have also been included and everything is up to date now now for performing the random vibration right to give the PSD acceleration all I need to do is right click and say insert PSD acceleration okay the boundary condition based on the previous thing I can say all supports and the direction that I'm going to give the acceleration is in the Y direction right and the tabular data as we have seen in the previous slide we can type that number down 10 150 20 200 30 200 and 50 100 so this is what the frequency values have been given as the acceleration gi being given as right so this is how it would be looking like so once I have given the information right the PSD acceleration I can go ahead and click on solve so now the simulation has been completed and now to verify and visualize the results of total deformation or the deformation in X Y Z directions and the one misses stresses I'll go ahead and perform that right so this is in the x direction for getting it in the y I will just duplicate and say y axis again duplicate the same and say z axis right so all the directional deformations in x y z and the one misses stresses so right click and say evaluate all results 
so this is what the total deflection would be based on the random vibration that we have given the total deformation in the x axis in the y axis in the z axis and this is the equivalent stress that it shows so this concludes our demo regarding the random vibration analysis thank you have a great time